Hello guys, today we are talking about bath contacts, electrical connections. Um, in this case here, specifically, it's about the horn, it does not work. This video is made possible with the help of Alfa Romeo Crew. Alfa Romeo Crew is a Facebook page, a Facebook group and also a YouTube channel. Be sure to check out everything we have to offer. Before we start, in, uh, start to disassemble everything, uh, we must know what are the symptoms. Um, and the symptom was um, the horn worked sometimes. And, it, it, and when it did, did not work, I'm sorry, and when it did not work, uh, both of the horns did not work. So this car, ha uh, this car has two horns, a lower and a higher, and when it works, it works both. And you, when it doesn't, uh, both do, do, don't, don't work. Oh my God. Uh, so, we, we are testing the relay. I already tested the relay off camera. Uh, it was not today, it was other day. Um, because the car has 27 years in the relay, the contacts, uh, maybe could be a little bit uh, burned out. Uh, they are not. But I will show you a way to test the, the relay function with only one wire. Uh, also, we are disassembling here the grill and we are testing the, the horns individually. In this way, uh, because of these symptoms, I think the problem is bad contact, bad electrical contact. I don't know for sure. Uh, I am just as clueless as you are like right now. Uh, I did not do anything off camera except the relay. Uh, but anyways, I will uh, show you how to test it uh, with me. So let's get started. Guys, in this part of this, the disassembling, um, I thought about doing a quick disassemble, but uh, I have a request how to remove the front grill of the Alpha 155. And um, I will do that if you want to pass forward a little bit, but I will explain more or less on detail how to remove a front grill of the Alpha 155. So, for th those of you who want to know, first you have to take out these two uh, plastic pieces on top of the, the, the headlights. Uh, uh, in my case, I have just this kind of um, plastic part, <laughs> I don't remember the name, uh, to hold down on the three holes. Okay, take this, this off. In this way, you can adjust your height and uh, left or, or right of your headlight. Now, the tricky part is how to remove this piece here. Because we have a, a, a nut down here, right? It's very difficult to pass your hand through there and through there. Okay? Not so much. If you take out your blinkers, this may not be in use for you, my cat. Don't, my cat wants to be with me. Uh, if you remove your blinker on each side, you have a little a little ball joint here, plastic ball joint. Okay, take it away on this side as well. Don't need to remove all the way the screw. Just take out the ball joint. In this side, it is very short, the wire. I take out the plug and take out my blinker. Now, in this way, the, the, the nut and washer is exposed. You take out with a, with a spanner. Take out the, the nut. The nut is very small. It, it is at eight millimeter on the outside. And um, if you don't have a washer, I advise you to use one because it is. I advise you to use a washer because the the, the footprint of the nut is very small, um, and you will you will damage this this metal here. Okay, use a washer. Now, in this way, you can take take out this part very easily. They are just 
pushed in place. Another washer and nut. Okay, put that aside. Take out. The, try not to, to break anything. Okay. I put some grease on there. I put some grease on here, in here, to be easy to take in and out. Attention, do not use oil-based grease because that is plastic here and we, you will damage these plastics. Do not use oil-based grease. Take that aside. Now the next part is a little bit eh, because I need a very big screwdriver to take out this uh, push system here. I don't have one, but I have this, uh, this is not, not a tool, but I can reach down there and with this cone I can spread apart the fitting. Before that, here on top you have this metal uh, spring, you have to make sure this is ready to, came, to come out. Push down a little bit, push, sorry, push out a little bit. And now, with a big screwdriver, not with this, pass it through this hole. And I'm seeing on the headlamp, okay, I will show you in a minute. It's broken. The same type of fitting on this, on this part, and the same type of uh, bushing on that side. Do not use, again, do not use oil-based grease, please. Now, real aside, you have your horns. Now, let's go inside the car to test our relay. Now, the first thing you want to do, if you don't have your um, wiring diagram, you want to discover which of these relays is the correct one for the horn. So you go on this, your steering wheel and you do, okay, you, you press it and with the, the other hand you feel which of the relays is doing the, the clicking. If you are not sure, you remove the one that you think is the, the relay, I think it's this one, and you do it again on the steering wheel. Okay, not this one. I don't know. I'm holding the ca camera, the phone, with my hand. Yes, you can do it like this. Or with both hands. Feel for it. Doesn't take too long now. Sorry. I will edit this out because it's very annoying for you, I know. Oh my god. I think it's the new one that I put in. No, okay. This one, beside this large one, I think is for the... No, this is for the window washer. This is for the blinkers, I think. I think... Uh, doesn't matter. So. Here we have the relay in question. How can it, we test the relay? I will show you firstly how does a relay work. This is very simple. I don't think this one has a, a schematic on it, but I, I, I managed it. Okay, guys. So let's let's just talk about the relays here for a moment. Um, I get I have a, a scheme here, a schematic. But it is not for for a horn. I, I did a, a small change for for you to understand what is happening here. So uh, the relay is this J45 here, for example. It's it's the same on many other systems. And you have inside the the relay you have a coil. Is this part here? And this coil is fed by negative and positive. When this uh, negative and positive are applied, the, the coil will create a, a magnetism and will uh, push this bridge on the 30, on the se so it, it will close this circuit on the 30, on the 87. 
and whatever you have down here, minus or, uh, or uh, positive or negative, will pass through the relay. So let's dig in a little bit more. In the case of the, the steering, the, the horn, sorry, this, you have always a negative on your relay, it's permanent, and when you apply the horn, you are, you are sending positive to your relay to close the, the circuit on your uh, coil. This can be reversed, you can always have positive and you can excite it with negative, it's the same, don't worry. Now, the horn is, is this uh, strange <laughs> this strange thing that, that, I, that I drew here. It's always connected to the negative and it's uh, expecting positive. When you press the horn and when you excite the coil and you pull up, pull in the, the bridge, you, are, you have positive here, you are sending this positive through the relay and out the relay and feeding the horn. Okay, I hope you understand. Another way that you can test if your circuit is correct uh, is to make your own shunt with or bridge with a piece of wire. The piece of wire will uh, will do this in the car. Will um, go on the 87th, on the 30, and the horn must um, horn itself. <laughs> if it's if if not if it's not the, the case, we we can have a problem. Uh, with feeding on the 87th or the exit of the 30 or vice versa, it's, it's, it's the same. Um, how can we test the relay itself? So uh, the relay in part is good because we know when, you pre when we press the, the, the button on the steering wheel, it latches on the, okay, the, the coil is good. Now the, the contacts on the bridge can be bad. But we can test, test the, the, that the contact with a multimeter on the 87, on the 30, or even with a, a, a lamp, a, a bulb. Um, I, I like to do that as well, but uh, let's do that on the car. Before we, can, we continue, I have this really big relay to show you. You have to, these two big connections and do th those two smaller ones. Uh, this represents exactly uh, what a relay should do how it sh should work these two smaller ones receive the, the low volt low voltage no the low current for the engagement of the relay and the relay will bridge these two pins these two uh, connections and as you may see you have down here the 30 sorry it's not focusing And up there, the 87th, we have the 86 and the 85. So 86 and 85 excite the relay. 30 and 87 is a bridge. You are bridging these two connections. So you will bridge these two connections. And also, we will see if in one of these, we have to have the battery tension. <laughs> 